American Auto Wire 1967 to 68 Mustang, starting on step three of page five of the instructions, picking back up from what we left off last time. This is Footage Factory YouTube installing the 68 Mustang American Auto Wire. In the last video, we physically installed the fuse box onto the firewall and the relay bank onto the wiper motor bracket. And in between the last video and now, I was stuck, but that was until I opened up bag number 510131, the washer wiper wiring yes. kit. The washer wiper wiring kit, say that three times. This is what it looks like. All right, number three, plug in the white wiper feed wire from the AAW dash harness into the new 510131 wiper harness as shown on pages six through 22 of this instruction set. The wiper switch connector will plug into the wiper switch when you install the cluster assembly into the dash. The wiper motor connector will plug into the motor assembly. Washer leads will plug into the coordinator. Anyway, so um, this right here, that part right there, the one with the pedal, that's the washer coordinator. We're gonna be deleting that if you want clean windows go outside and scrub them just like how windex gives you cleaner windows subscribing to my channel gives you five extra horsepower here are the wires you have the wiper motor connection and then on the other side you have the wiper switch connection you're going to be plugging them in at some point but for the meantime the w13 w2a we're going to be wrapping them up and put them to the side until further notice unless something changes my mind and i want to use that coordinator in the end but i'll keep those parts the wiper switch connection in order to gain access to this component cut open bag 510131 unwrap Travel the wires and on one side you'll see the wiper switch connection and on the other side of the wires you'll have the wiper motor connection as well as washer coordinator wire since we're axing that component we're getting rid of it eventually we're just gonna tape those up and move them out of the way but as we bring it into the cab of the car and identify the wiper motor and the connection so that we can plug them in I noticed that some of the wires were frayed so I used a little bit of electrical tape to fix that problem just like how you should use a little bit of mouse movement to click that like button please page five instruction three where it tells you to plug in the white wiper feed wire from the aw dash harness we need to identify where that wire is before we plug it in find it and then plug it in on the back of the connection it, you might think you plug it in on the front but don't be mistaken plug it in on the back as i show here i forgot to show me actually plugging it in so here's the finished product keep in mind i still haven't plugged in the wiper motor though i did plug in the switch through that white wire because i wanted it tethered to the whole harness because at this point i'm going to start routing it you'll see page five with illustration three and four and that's basically what i'm doing there's no easy way about this i'm shoving the wires in i'm using the clips i think they're n yep and those end clips are a replacement for the underdash wiring clips that came oem and i might still have them in my used pile now this next section i want you to have the ability to watch me install and route all these wires behind the dashboard firewall whatnot so i'm going to literally play a song for the next three minutes it'll be one entire b-roll just because i don't want you to miss out on the installation and if there's something that you want to pause and watch you know i guess i could talk through the entire thing but music is a heck of a lot more enjoyable
let's grab us some of those clips so that when we route the wires behind the dash that they stay put when driving the car. So now we're ready to wire and install the key ignition. I left the old ignition in place in the hopes that I could wire that. Unfortunately, they have a brand new unit that is all new wiring. You'll see what I'm talking about. So let's take bag 510053, open it up, take the key ignition out. So at some point in this process, maybe earlier on or maybe later on like I'm doing now, you're gonna have to remove the original key ignition. So look that up on, on YouTube, how to remove the 68 Mustang key ignition. And now you are able to swap the spacer. And since we should have recently opened up 510053, that bag, it should have a set of instructions inside of it, which we can match up with the big set of instructions. I think that's page six right here I'm looking at. And just match those up. It talks about a brown wire that we have to connect up to it. Break. Pressure light prove out. No, I don't know where these wires go to. I just follow the directions and hopefully it makes sense when it's all said and done. They have this spacer, which I stole from the last ignition and when putting it on this new component this new ignition i i taped it on to make sure it stays in place all right so this is how the wiring looks on the rear of the ignitions let's go ahead and install it once it is installed go ahead and take your key and the uh the key component and reinsert it and uh, you should be able to turn the key in your car now kind of a nice feeling so now we're going to start laying some wire. We have to open up a few bags. We're going to do it in sequential order so we don't get out of sync. Let's get opening up bag 510465, which contains wires for the front of the car, the front lights of the vehicle. Now, a lot of high-end custom car makers have themselves a wire wall. I know Koenigsegg does. They have themselves a wall where they're able to spread out and see where all the wires go in your garage as you're doing this i hope you have the ability to take the wires and really spread them out so you can see which is the longest wire or if there's some hidden wires inside the bundle i like to clamp it down on my vice and then really open it up i literally wrap it around my entire garage and what you see me doing here no i'm not insulating it but i am using electrical tape to tape it together so that when i pull it and i thread it through whatever hole it may be i even did this to the rear of the car but this one's going through the firewall it comes through in one because some wires are longer than one another so if i just tape it all together i can pull it and thread it through the car all right it looks like they have a little parts bag in this 510465 there'll be a loose parts bag within the larger bag it's a common theme that once you open up the bag there'll be a smaller non-wired loose parts bin that enables you to wire the rest of the lights. Now, since we're laying the wires in this video, at the beginning of next video, we're gonna open up this 510465 loose parts bag. But in the meantime, we're gonna put it in a Tupperware and we're gonna put it off to the side. Now we're gonna do that with every single bit of wiring so we don't get unorganized. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through this video. Well, let's make things easier on ourselves by removing the master cylinder so that we have a access to a clean portion of the engine side of the firewall and we can see exactly what hole that we need to thread all the wires through. These are the first of many wires we're going to be routing through that firewall hole right there. In case a little more clarification is needed, the wires we're routing through are the long wires that come in bag 510465. And yes, we're still talking about 510465 because there's a second set of long wires inside that bag that we're routing through this hole. And afterwards, we're gonna put on the grommet, but unfortunately, and I don't know this at the time, I'm putting on the wrong grommet. So I thread it all the way through, just like how I'm supposed to do. I put it through the hole and uh, I situate it flush with the hole, but I find out later on as I begin to start putting more wires through it that uh, the grommet comes out, which forces me. And you'll see, you know what? I'm, I'll quit talking until we get to that point. When we first installed the fuse box and routed all the wires and put it in place, we need to now identify the forward light wiring connections right here there's the white one the clear one almost and the uh the flat black one and we're going to be plugging those in
On the 68 Mustang, they have the blinker indicator lights actually on the hood themselves, external from the dashboard. So we have the wiring, this blue wiring right here that's supposed to connect to the underside of the hood. I end up putting it through the uh, the firewall, but uh, later on in this video, I pulled it back through to the inside of the dash because uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna hook that up or even if I am gonna hook it up right now. All right, we still have some parts left over on 510465, but let's put it away in the Tupperware and save it for a later time. I put the part number in there, so when I open the Tupperware box, I know which set of bags and parts I'm dealing with. So let's move on to the next. All right, now we're moving to engine wiring. And one of the reasons why we don't want to do this is because we're connecting the lights. We're not actually working on the engine right now. In fact, that's in the next video or the video afterwards. But these wires are going to be routed through the same hole and grommet in the firewall that we're routing all of these light wires through. So why not cut open this bag, unwrap the wires and route them through the same holes. And then, um, and then we'll go ahead and organize all the rest of the parts in another Tupperware box. And then we'll stow it away to whip it out when we decide we want to wire that engine. It's at this point that I realized the grommet I used was the incorrect size. So I simply brought it over to the instructions. I whipped out all of the grommets so I can see all what the different sizes are and compare it. And that's how I was able to determine the correct grommet size. If it goes in easily, probably the wrong grommet this is the right one and it's hard to put in all right sorry i haven't mentioned it to this point but the wiring for the engine is 510466 that's the bag we have to open it up go to page six see where the engine management is and connect those wires once you have associated which connectors to do so with 510462. This is the bag with the components responsible for the lighting and the fuel sending unit to the rear of the car. All right, we're going to treat this bag just like the rest, open it up and prepare it before installation. And one of the preparation steps is to take the rear body harness and route it through the opening on the left hand door pillar area. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to connect the rear of the car. We're going to route it through the left hand side of the car. This is interesting because it's the bottom view of that connector right there. And if you look, you'll see the uh, orange battery. If you use it, goes that way. It's on the right side. But see on the top there, it has one, two, three, four, five connections. And on the bottom, there's one, two, three, four. So let's look at one, two, three, four, five. Um, but the only open connection for the orange was on this side. But if I turn it upside down, that means that one, two, three, four, five is on the bottom and one, two, three, four is on top. And look at one, two, three, four is on the bottom. All right, let's go back, put it over there. One, two, three, four, the two middle ones, green's on the left and X is on the right. That means nothing's on the right. Wait a second. One, two, three, four on the right is green and X, nothing is on the left. It's opposite of this. So I'll be recording this in case I need to get a hold of you guys to figure it out. Anyways, I'm gonna plug in the two blue wires on the left and right side of the number one and four of one, two, three, four bottom. See you in a second. All right, now we have ourselves the rear body wiring kit installed to the rear body harness. And what we have to do now is route or basically thread them through the car. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the longest wire. We're gonna actually take the two longest wires and we're going to just manually thread them through the car. In fact, I, I use a, um, a wrench, I tie it to my wrench so I can push it through. Uh, can I use it like as a large needle? Push it through the car, grab the, uh, the wrench. And then afterwards, after I'm done spreading out all the long, the, the longest wires is I pull the longest wires back after clamping down on it with a pair of vice grips and uh, I tape it to the rest of the wires and I pull all of the wires through. We've reached a good stopping point. We've laid 
a lot of the wires, I don't know, 60, 70% of the wires have been laid. And the front um, lights, the rear lights and fuel sending wires, they've been laid, they have been connected. And then what I don't wanna do is lay the engine management wires. I've already laid a few, I don't wanna to get too far ahead of myself, but these need to go through the grommet that go through the hole right there in the firewall. Anyways, but this is a great stopping point because what we're gonna do in the next video is we're either going to wire the lights or we're going to lay these engine management wires. You know what, I think we're gonna leave that till afterwards. So we're gonna wire some lights up before we start working on the engine. Plus the engine's more exciting and lights are boring as hell. So why not do the hard stuff first? Something fell and I don't know what it was. So keep an eye out for something you see out of place that fell.